Hey everybody, it's Rajesh here. And Tane here. Welcome to our podcast, Baskets of Knowledge, Chats with a Difference. In our podcast, we invite guests from around the country and around the world to talk about how they got to where they are at the moment. It's about a journey, it's about an experience, it's about their life. To actually reflect today, actually this is, this is important. But can I ask you a question? I mean, this is, I guess, for just a general question. What was it? Was it an internal pressure for you to succeed that got that got you going, or was it the fact that everyone else is around this? You, you go, you have to, I have to have to study, and then you don't sleep, and everything goes out the window. Was that what is what is that what is the fact internally or externally? Because you know, health affairs shit is you hear all the, you should, you know, everyone's around you, and and you are living at St. Margaret's College, which is also high pressure. Everyone's super academic and trying to do the best that we can. Was it that? Mm. Or was it internally? I I feel like it's, it's I feel like it's different for everyone. My yeah. my reasons for like coming in is like I I pretty much had like a a very I pretty much had the belief growing up that no matter it's it's just about work. If I put in enough work, I can achieve everything. And that's kind of how I rolled growing up. And it, and it ended up being working really well for me in every stage. Is whenever things would get tough, I just go. I just go against the wind. You know what I mean? It's like when things are tough, I'd go against the wind. And it's like every single time I would. And I'd give it my all, right? It did always work out. So coming coming into um university, I knew it was gonna be a bit of a challenge, but I was kind of just chilled because I just knew that if I put in enough work, I can get through with anything. That's just kind of my ideology growing up. It's just how, what I believed every single time. It's like whatever I put my time and effort to, I'll become great at. And that's that's kind of how it rolled. And then knowing that I was because I was going for pharmacy, knowing that I, I could take it probably a bit more chill. It resulted in me taking it a bit too chill, where that I literally just started seeing things crumbling left, right, and center. So my ego started getting a bit of a hit when I started seeing that things weren't adding up. Um, so with that, I, I um, with that, and just struggling with the peer pressure and everything like that, and um, coming to see my results in the first semester, it was it was a very big eye opener. It was a very big eye opener for me. It was like, well. I was I'm so close to messing this up completely um that I might not even get through this like the the efforts that my parents put in to like get me here like the scholarship money all of this is going to mean nothing if I like keep this up you know and if I don't get through so like it was again like seeing seeing the consequences of like my actions like not being off and doing all these things right and it's all coming together and hitting me in that semester break and it's, it pretty much just Again, I just started reflecting about all these things, um, putting together what went right, what went wrong, putting them all together, and it was again just like, well, this is this is my this is my shot. This is I'm I'm just gonna do what I've always done. It's just like close close everything up, just think in that one direction, and just pull through. And yeah, so second semester was way more stressful for me, um, just knowing that I had I needed to get a lot better grades if I wanted to get through this. It was about saying no to a lot of people. It was about shutting everyone out of my life, kind of in a way that we're in. And it was about putting on like excessive amounts of workload, like just heaps um, in comparison to what I was doing first semester to the point where I got alopecia, which is just like stress related okay. alopecia, started losing hair. More than sleeping on time, it was couch surfing and just waking up and studying and then sleeping on the couch, waking up and studying. But it it was it was again, it was just like my way of thinking about it was I'm going to give this everything like how I believe if I give it my all I've always gotten what I wanted and that's what I did I just gave it everything that I had um and yeah at the end of it 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 ended up working out again once again proving to myself uh, my belief um that if you just if you go against the wind as hard as you can instead of like doing the opposite because it's what I thought was I could do nothing about this and nothing will happen or I can do something about this, which is going to require effort, and I might get a good outcome. So that that's kind of the the way that I was thinking in that time. Yeah, that's a good philosophy there, and I guess and I guess like it's a it's a paradox, right? Semester one didn't work out for you. Two things can happen: you can either go, it is what it is, and just forget about it, or you can go, I've, I've got a I've got a dream, I've got a vision, and like you said, just now the actual power is in my hands. If I don't change, nothing changes. If I change, things will change. What about you for for you, Samad? Yeah, I think um, with me, um, like, I think I just kind of made a promise to myself that, like, I was just going to, like, work as hard as I can. And the only reason I wouldn't get in wouldn't be because I was, like, slacking off, like, you know, like, doing, like, whatnot. It'd be because um, it just wasn't for me, I guess. Like, yeah. I, I was going to put in all I had. And 
if I didn't make it in, I'd be happy with myself. I'd be content because I was like, you know what? I gave it my all. It just wasn't for me. And I'd yeah. be happy with that. So that was kind of like my mindset going into it. But then th there were like like a lot of days where like, you know, I'd, I'd like wake up in the morning and just, you know, you don't want to get out of bed. You just want to lie and you just want to spend the whole day doing nothing. And I just kind of just think back to like, um, like the fact that I did end up like declining the scholarships for UC and kind of like, it was kind of like I burnt the votes essentially. It was kind of like, there's no going back. Yeah. So I'd like think about that. This is like, it, you know, I've burnt the votes. This is the only way forward. I have to get up. There's no like, there's no plan B essentially. So I think the fact that I, I made it for myself that there was no plan B, like there was no, it was like, it's either mad or nothing. You know, it's like, I, I gave myself no other option. That kind of pushed me, I guess. I guess it can also be toxic as well, <laughs> like that, but I, it ended up working out for me in, in the sense that like those days that I didn't want to get out of bed, I was like, wait a minute, like, I, I have nothing else to do if I don't get in. So I'm like, shit. But again, I'm, I'm just going to sign for something for both of you. You've had, you've had someone along the way that's pushed you, you know, your dad at some point gave you the wise words to, Hey, you got to do this here, push you. When you were at school, Mr. Stocks came and said, Hey, go to this talk here. When you were in, in, when you were going to go to the exam, I'm guessing it was George that was there, but it's they just go write the exam, you know, and at each point, you know, we all have our drive, but at each point there's somebody out there or some person there that just is there to back you to say, Hey, and we just have no idea who that person could be some random person or someone who knows your life. And, um, because you know it with life is not just us by ourselves i think we forget about that life is is people are around us obviously our families are the ones who know us the most but sometimes those external people just come in and go hey we believe in you just 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 give it a crack and that's important to, to acknowledge as well but again to reflect on what you've done and to the the fact that people can say all that they want but if you don't do the hard work it's not going to happen right it's not going to happen so, I mean, that was meant to be a short thing. It was health side first year, but I think it's really, there's some amazing stuff in there. But now we're going to fast forward into your life. So, Samad Med School, was there a pharmacy school? So, that's a whole different story together. But now let's talk about your lives. I mean, who should we go with? We'll go, we'll go with Azir first, then we'll come to you, Samad. Azir, so, um, pharmacy school, that's just one part of your life. And the one thing I want to speak about is, you know, you spoke about earlier on that, you know, you've been really big into sports and the gym was important for you. And... While you've been doing pharmacy school as well, you've also been training and doing things in the, in the gym and some things that are really awesome. Do you want to talk about that, that journey as well? Yeah, sure. Ab absolutely. So we, we, I can start from the beginning with this one. <laughs> like yeah. our good story to start from the beginning. So uh, growing up, I, I was just a bit more of an energetic kid. I remember I, I loved um, running around with my dad at the park, um, throwing around ball with them. And that when we got into school and when we started getting into the sports side of things like running at school, uh, I, I was really just like, I just found myself naturally pushing myself just out of nowhere. And then with that, I started realizing really early on that I was getting very good at it um, very quickly. And then I found myself leading the races at one point. And I remember with that, just the idea of winning I got addicted to it because um, just uh, just knowing that I was better than a lot of people, it was just felt good. But also, I got addicted to winning very early on, just with that that feeling that I'm doing really good. You know, I'm up, I'm up here, and with um winning comes like a lot of clout and a lot of people wanting to be your friends and popularity and with the popularity becomes expectation so I find uh, with my sporting how it excelled is I kind of found myself in a position where I started getting people's expectations on me people would come to me before say like big races and stuff like that be like bro you got this you're gonna win this one right and I'm just like oh wow I can't even like relax anymore so it put me in a spot where I I went out of my way to give it a hundred percent and anything support related just because people now were expecting me to win and I didn't even have a chance to relax. So I was up there and I was doing everything I could to be up there. And it, early on, it allowed me to get like a lot of like sporting certificates, um, medals and stuff like that. And I got really big into football. That was like one of my first sports of choice. I did, I did that through club and I did that carrying on and I thought I was going to do football for a very long time. Pakistan trip happened, those nine months at school killed me. I, I let go of sporting completely. I was just playing a little bit of football, I think, at the school that I was at, marginally during lunch times, and then back to study. Came back to New Zealand, realized I wasn't any good anymore. The kids that were playing now were far better than me. And I, I eventually 
well, I told myself, well, I'm never, I told myself early on that I was always going to have a sport in my life. That's just how I wanted it. I was never going to like let go of sports. And so I, I decided to trade off football with um, badminton, which I picked up in Pakistan and, um, and gym, because I thought my whole idea was that, well, I'm good at anything I do physically. Why not gym? It's my whole idea. Got into the gym and again, started making results really, really well. Got into badminton, joined up with the club, started playing with my dad, started weighing out the options pretty much. Gym was going really good, but it wasn't competitive. It wasn't like anything like football was. You, you go out there, it's a team effort. You know, you, you score a few goals, you celebrate with your team, you know, you get a medal or something like that. I was just getting guys coming up to me saying that, hey, look, you're looking jacked, bro. You're looking shredded, which was cool. But it, it just, I just didn't have a way of like um, putting together how well I was doing unless it was like looking in the mirror um, or like getting compliments from other people. And badminton was just one of those sports that people in Asia, they start them off really, really early. Kids are playing this at like three, four years old, getting coaching. And I was kind of just getting into this. And I never, I didn't really saw myself getting up there to the elite level and I did want to dedicate my life to it but I just didn't feel like even if I did I'd get anywhere and funnily funny enough around this time where this is always happening and I was trying to look for something to do like do I do bodybuilding competitions what do I do you know I know there's a lot of PED use when it comes to bodybuilding a lot of people abuse steroids and I was almost doing a lot of research watching a lot of YouTube videos I was kind of heading along that line where I was almost like thinking about ways of doing it. So then maybe I could become a very, very good bodybuilder. It's kind of where I was thinking. And then around that time, my coach um, came to start coaching at Shirley Boys High School. His name is Lee. Actual. He's a former Commonwealth Games competitor. Really, really amazing fella. Really, really strong for his age. He, he said, he looked at me, he said, well, you look like you'd make a great weightlifter. Why don't you come do weightlifting for me? And instantly I was already looking for a switch to something that, you know, be a bit more sporting, a way of calculating results. And suddenly I just switched to um, uh, Olympic weightlifting with him and I uh, started training with him hard. And with my background in sporting, with the, plus the bodybuilding I was doing, I found myself making results really, really quickly. And I ended up winning nationals in about, about a year of just doing weightlifting. And that's kind of how my journey um, started. And so when academic and university came around, and it was way too much work to do in one year plus do the sporting. I was starting off as weightlifting at the start, come back and study. Then I realized, well, weightlifting and that is taking a lot of my mental energy as well, which I need to study. And so I completely quit weightlifting that year after putting in so much work. Uh, it's one thing that I, I hated doing because I did it again in Pakistan. And it, I felt like I had to make that sacrifice. Otherwise, it was just with me, with my knowledge and coming in, to study hard again it was just never going to work out for me so I decided to just suck it up quit weightlifting altogether um to put in all the work in the study and it ended up pulling me through um and then after I got back into weightlifting again so yeah oh what, what a great story and and um just for our listeners out there what, so what have you been doing so what do you want to explain, explain what Olympic weightlifting is because people don't actually know what that is they go you know you, you see bodybuilders you know what that is you know powerlifting power lift, and Olympic lifting what, what is the difference I guess yeah, so pretty much Olympic weightlifting, it, it, it consists of two main um, two main exercises or things that you do. It's one's called the snatch and the other calls the others as the clean and jerk. So pretty much what a snatch is, you start off with like the barbell loaded with weights on each side on the ground. You pretty much squat down into the position, wide arms holding the bar. And in one swift movement, you're trying to get the bar from the ground into the air, holding it straight. And so that's that's the snatch. The other one is a clean and jerk. You typically do a lot more weight in the clean and jerk. If you don't, you probably should readjust your technique, get a bit more coaching. But pretty much with the clean and jerk, you start off with the bar on the ground. You load up a bit more weight than you would in the, in, in the snatch. And you're pretty much getting the bar onto your shoulders, readjusting, nice dip and drive and locking it out. Um, so snatch is like one swift movement, getting the bar into the air, holding it. And clean and jerk is two movements, getting the bar into the air and holding it. And uh, yeah, it's been an Olympic sport for years. Um, there's been uh, minor adjustments and technique over the years, but pretty much that's how it is um, at the moment. So that's what I'm doing at the moment. Um, yeah, and it's, it's been going really, really well. Yeah, awesome. And talking really well, don't be, don't be humble. Yeah, recently, you've done really, really well. So let's talk about that. Babe. We'll come to your most recent, recent competition. 
Uh, yeah, sure. Um, so, yeah, so leading leading up to this competition, right, I will give a bit of background. So um, with, with quit weightlifting for one year, got back into it, didn't think I was going to be any good. Um, one year off, right, it's going to put a big dent in my lifting. Sucked it up, got back into lifting, was lifting really small weights compared to what I once was. And slowly but surely, muscle memory is a, is a gift from God, I believe, because getting back into it, uh, training properly again, it genuinely only took like a month, maybe like a few months getting back into lifting properly again. And I feel like that wouldn't be possible without muscle memory, which I feel like goes for pretty much anything. I feel like if you have put in work in the past, a part of that stays with you. And it won't take you that long to get back to that place again, given the right circumstances, whether that's for studying as well. Say you're performing academically, you, you take a few years off, or no, not maybe not a few, but you take a year off, you're not really doing much. You get you you think you're useless, but you slowly work your way back up again. I fully believe that the work that you've done previously, it, it, it it's always there with you. It's like it's always there behind your back, helping you to get there faster once again. It's like you've paved the road, right? And you can always go back on that road again to get to where you once were. Um, and that's how I kind of felt about it. Got back into it good. And then these past few years has been really just like a study. I'm going to study. And then when I'm studying too much, I'm, I'm not focusing on my lifting. Lifting. Now I'm lifting too much. And, I'm, and it was, it's been really hard for me to kind of just find the balance between academic and sporting. And it's almost at times made me feel like that I should just quit weightlifting altogether and just focus on my um, academic. Because at least with that, I know I'm guaranteed to get money. And so this year, especially like with all the last few years, kind of just being up and down, up and down, I just really thought, well, I'm not going to give myself a choice this time. I'm just, I'm, I just have to be good at both. Or I have to do both simultaneously, like no choice. Like I can do it. You know, I just have to just give away a bit of free time, just stretch more, get up early, get my, get my schedule sorted. And that's how I kind of be going with it because I feel like with this whole university experience, it's been a kind of a lot of ups and downs with like losing confidence. Like a lot of times I've just felt like, well, maybe I'm not good at this anymore. Maybe I'm just not good at studying. Maybe I'm just not good at um, weightlifting anymore. And, I, and I've noticed that when you're so close to getting what you want, when you're so close to that, that light at the end of the tunnel, right? There's a lot more challenges that just come with it, a lot more obstacles, right? And these obstacles I never had when I was kind of just going through it, you know, like first year of pharmacy, second year, they're all just like, I mean, together now when I'm so close to getting what I want. And I've kind of just realized that I'm just like, you know, when you're, when you're so close to the end, you know, to get what you want, everything's just going to come in and it's going to try to stop you from getting what you want. And you just kind of have to go against it. So I pretty much told myself, well, growing up, I've always had that pressure, right? Dad forcing me to get into study and I'd, under his guidance and like that pressure, I would, I would go and I'd perform academically well. My coach, just being there for me all the time, just saying, do this, do that. You're doing this wrong, doing that. I've always had my coach's guidance and he was telling me what to do to kind of get what, uh, get through and do well in sporting. And then when I came to university, I was just by myself. I didn't have my dad's pressure anymore. My dad, I'm, I'm too old now. My dad doesn't force me to do anything. I'm just kind of on my own. My coach isn't there with me anymore. He's all the way back in Christchurch. I don't have that pressure from him to like tell me to do what to do so tell me to uh, tell me on what to do and how to train so I'm just here by myself now and as I feel like for me now it's been a big struggle to be my own person to those voices that were in my head before you know in my back my dad telling me to do this my coach I've kind of have to become those voices for myself now and I feel like the reason why I was going up and down is because I, I felt like I felt like a kid that just didn't have you know adults telling me yep. you know what to do anymore so I just felt free to do whatever I want and and in that I wasn't really making as much progress anymore so recently it's just kind of just imagining those voices again you know my dad and my coach and being those for myself now telling myself the things that my dad would be telling me telling myself the things that my coach would be telling me being hard on myself now now that no one is here and and that's what has really allowed me to focus on that academic get my schedule right, be hard on myself for um, my weightlifting um, lessons and like the training that I've been doing, like how much coach would be. And it's honestly just putting in that work, uh, just battling it out, just, just waiting, just waiting. And uh, recently with the South Island camps, this happened. 
I, I, I lifted really well. I won in the senior men's category. And then at the end of it, during this prize ceremony, I was surprised to um, have realized that I also got the best lifter, best male lifter at the South Island, which is like for my age, for um, uh, for my weight category, how much I lifted, I was the pound for pound the best in all of the South Island. So um, hearing that and, and and getting this, what I'm wearing right now for it has, has been like an, ama an amazing feeling. It's like the confidence that come back to me, you know, all, all those times that I doubted myself is, you know, it's, it's, it's telling me that I, I do have what it takes and I, I can do it by myself now, you know, that now that I have no one here, I'm just kind of being on my own. It, it's always in there. And it was just that that delayed gratification that I've been kind of waiting for, just in this really upsetting spot, you know, just realizing that I'm not I'm not performing like well as I want to in, in the academic side, nor the weightlifting and everything just going backwards. I was again just thinking, well, you know, I have two choices. I can either let this get to me or I can go against the wind and and give it my best and see what happens. And it was like it was like the best reward ever. Just, just, just hearing that and get and getting that. So, the, the week has been absolutely amazing and just a, a big reflection about like the ups and downs of the journey and 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 um, waiting it out and and just putting in the work and and getting that, getting that sense of uh, happiness and what what I wanted at the end has been absolutely amazing. So, yeah. well, I, I love the fact that you told the story because you know people just see the end. And it, with everything, people just see the end. They see the hundred meter winner. They see the med school. They see the, but they don't understand the story. And you know the fact that you've said actually this wasn't easy. You know I was struggling. As you as you both said at the start, coming to university, you lose yourself. You forget that hey, you know you had your, your parents, you had your coach driving you. Come to university, they're all gone. They're there, but they're gone. You know essentially you, you're living the story by yourself. Now the stories that you tell yourself are the stories that are just around you. Um, so it's really interesting and really powerful to hear that hey, you struggled. And you, you struggle to find that balance. You know, university, we always, we always talk about balance. It's easy to talk about balance, but you have to find that balance. And again, you know, because you're doing a competitive sport and you're doing a competitive program, the two are both pretty tough to balance and that you have to go, you have to sacrifice one to do the other and sacrifice the other to the one. So that's that's really beautiful. But I, I love the testament that you have said at the end, you know, you actually just go, this is it. I'm just going to give it a crack, give them both my best shot. And again, I love I love how you keep on coming back to your, your time in Pakistan as, as your discipline. If you can if you survive there and did that there, then what can you do right now? That's a really beautiful and um and I, I follow you and I see all the cool things that you do, but your story is actually more makes everything a lot more um amazing, given that you've got it as opposed to oh it's just a smooth road. I just go to the gym, I do my graph and off I go. So um thank you for sharing that there. So, Mark, we're going to switch over to you now. Um, so, med school is one part of your life. Let's talk about the other part of your life that, you, that you're involved in as well. What is, what is the big part of your life that, I mean, for, for Uzair, it's, it's, it's um, powerlifting. What, what's, sorry, Olympic lifting. Don't say powerlifting, I'll get shot. Um, <laughs> Olympic lifting. What is, what is the big part of your life, Samad? I guess with me, I've always, like, kind of struggled to find out who I really was. Um, I never really knew who I was as a person, never really knew what interested me, never really knew, like, you know, what my passions were, you know, um, yeah. That was kind of like, even through our high school, I didn't really, like my self-esteem wasn't, you know, like it was pretty low. Didn't really know who I was. Confidence wasn't, wasn't that high. And like Uzziah said, Uzziah got his kind of confidence from winning, you know, yeah. um, just from you know, coming first and whatnot. And um, being brothers, we were kind of like, even though we weren't really competing against each other, that's what made people made it look like, you know, it was kind of like, oh, okay, we were both in the same football team. We both used to play football. He, he was like really good. I was like decent, you know. He was scoring more goals than me. I was like, you know what? Like, I'm, you know, like if he's scoring more goals than me, this is probably not for me. So I just quit football. I was like, you know what? Football is probably not for me, you know? And then, um, yeah, and I just, just, yeah, I guess just like things like that. Um, just not really knowing who you were. I had to like keep like dropping things. So I'm like, you know what? I'm not good at this. He's better than me at this, you know? Pretty, um, that was kind of like my mindset. But then like with studying, I found out that, wait a minute, I'm actually, I'm actually good at this, you know? I'm like, I'm like doing really well. So I kind of like stuck onto that as like my, my, my identity, essentially. It was kind of like, like a lot of my self-esteem was coming from studying, which is not, you know, not too good because you do bad, self-esteem goes down. You do good, oh, yeah. you know, it was awesome, right? So I guess with high school, it was just a lot of um, just study and I was just, I was a big gamer. I was just spending a lot of my time just gaming. Didn't really have that much social confidence um, in high school. I was just kind of like just at home, you know, doing my own thing. Um, But then like, I kind of just made like a, like a choice I think about year 12 I was like you know what like I, I actually want to quit gaming I, I, I actually don't like this I don't like being indoors spending I actually want to be a bit more outgoing I want to you know start talking to people so I applied for um like um this role at uh, Shirley Boys I'm um, BOT rep you had to basically do a speech and you know you'd be on the board of trustees 
like that sounds kind of easy now looking, looking back but back then that was like a huge like that was like probably the scariest thing I could ever do I remember like going back home just thinking of, like because I've, I've you know applied for it but then I'd like you know go back home like I remember just having like a panic attack in my bed just thinking about the speech and from from that moment onwards I kind of was just like you know what I'm just gonna go outside every lunchtime I'm just gonna talk to like anyone like you know I'm just gonna talk to people and just try to get to know people you know gain social skills through that I guess and so I, I just started off with like year nines you know and that you know I was like you know year nines are small people you know probably, probably pretty easy to talk to them but I remember, I remember going up to my first year nine. I was like, "Oh, yo, I, I was too scared. I just backed off. I went to my mate. I'm like, you know, what? I can't do this. Like, like cut this out. You know, I'm not going for BOT. But um, he actually ends up going. He, he was like, you know, you know what, Samad, you can't. You know, you got to do this. And then he actually goes up to the group of year nines. He's like, "Yo, boys, um, this is my friend Samad. He just wants to have a talk to you." And then yeah, I just kind of like yeah, did, did my thing. Just told them who I was. You know, what I was like running for. And that like that really helped me gain like a lot of like confidence, I guess, in the sense that I finally saw. Wait, wait a minute. People aren't that scared. They're actually willing to listen to you. You just got to be, you know, just have that confidence. And I think from that that point onwards, I was just going around, you know, the field every day, and just just talking to people. And, and the, you know, people were just giving like pretty positive feedback back to me. You know, like these are like, you know, this guy's like a decent guy. He's actually about to like do some decent stuff. He's, you know, and I was like, you know what, like this is it. And then I did that speech, and I ended up winning by like a landslide. And I think that was kind of like where it started for me. I was like, you know what, I kind of like, I'm. I've kind of got a bit more to my identity than just studying, you know, I can actually talk to people and I really enjoy that as well, you know. Um, and so then, you know, from how science, I guess, again, like I said, you know, people are coming from all different places around New Zealand. No one knows who you are. No one, like no one knew that I was like that shy, quiet kid in high school that didn't really talk to anyone. So I became this like, you know, really outgoing guy that was really charismatic talking to everyone. And um, yeah, that was quite amazing because, you know, I met a lot of mates, you know, whatnot. But then, like Azir said, like with OWIC, some people continue OWIC throughout the year. I wasn't about that. I was like, you know what? I'm going to just spend my time with OWIC and just um, then study and whatnot. And then all the mates that I made, they all said that to me as well. But then after OWIC had ended, they always kept partying, going to the clubs. And I was like, yo, what the hell? You know, I actually met like a best mate um, during that time. He, he said he'd want to get into med as well. And then like, yeah, he, he completely went off the rails. He was just partying like every day. And I was like, what the hell? And then like, literally, like, I think like a few weeks before the exams, he was like, yo, Samad, like, I think I'm stuffed. He was like, I'm really, I'm really enjoying Dunedin, but I'm just not enjoying studying. And I was like, yo, um, yeah. And I, so I think, um, yeah. So then I guess what happened is I kind of like, my identity kind of became like more also like my relationship with people, I guess, you know, like, oh, you know, if my, if my relationship with people are good, you know, I'm feeling good about myself, you know, what, not, what, not. But then like, as I went through health science, I ended up losing basically all my mates because they all just ended up having, they, they wanted to have fun. They wanted to do what not. Yeah. So I was kind of just left by myself. Like, and like, now it's just like, well, wait a minute, you know, self-esteem is going down again. And now it's like, you know what? Like the one thing that I thought I was like good at now was with people, you know, but now I'm like literally by myself studying in a room by myself every day. Like, you know, it's just like, wait a minute. So, you know, who am I as a person, I guess. And like, yeah. And I think with the whole grades as well, like grades go up and down. I think that's a pretty bad way to get your self-esteem. Um, but yeah, so then, you know, health site ends, you know, um, I pass, you know, when I get into med, most amazing, you know, moment in my life. And I, and I, it's actually crazy. I used to think that, you know, once I made into med, my life would be perfect, you know, like all my life's issues, everything that was wrong with me would go away. And it's actually, it's actually quite the opposite. Um, I think after I made into med, my life actually went like, uh, probably worse than like the year I had cancer. It was actually, it was absolutely insanely bad. Like my life just went completely downhill. Oh no. Because what happened? During the year that I studied so hard for health science and whatnot, I ended up dropping off all my hobbies. And I quit gaming completely. I stopped talking to people. I, I barely even talked to my, my, my parents, like my brother or whatnot. You know, I was kind of just like, you know, just studying and that's it. And I just dropped off everything. I didn't, like, I kind of lost who I was as a person and just to try to get into med. And then when I made into med, okay, second year came. I have nothing to show for it. I'm in med, but who am I as a person? There's nothing left. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just a shell. <laughs> And, and what happened is when I finally made into med, I'm like, you know what, I'm going to chill out now, you know, I'm going to chill out. And so I, I stopped studying, I stopped, I literally stopped, I, I stopped going to too much tutorials, nothing, it was like the most chillest year. And then what happened is because I got a lot of, a big portion of my self-esteem for my studying, now I stuck to studying as well. I, I was, I was getting, I was doing really bad. I, I was almost about to fail the year. So now I'm like at the lowest, lowest point of my life as well. So it's just like, okay, I don't have any mates because I didn't actually study with, I didn't really talk to anyone first year, second year, no mates. Okay, I stopped studying as well. Grades are downhill. So it's like, you know, you know, like what, like, who am I? And I think another thing is like, like, I'm, I'm a Muslim, is a Muslim, right? 
as a Muslim, we're meant to like pray five times a day, you know, like all that good stuff. And I think I lost that as well um, with the with the studying in a sense. You know, I just like kind of told myself, you know, I don't have enough time, which is like the most, that's the stupidest excuse as well. Um, so I kind of like, like during this period, it was just such a bad, like dark time for me. I was like, I don't know who I am. Nothing's going my way. I thought my life should be sorted, you know, like I'm in med. This is all yeah. I ever wanted, but wait a minute. Um, so I kind of just started praying to God. I was like, you know what? Like, if you if you make me pass this year, like I'm gonna I'm gonna become a good Muslim. I'm gonna start praying again. You know, I'm gonna, you know, I'm all all that all that. And I was like, I I did I genuinely didn't think I was gonna pass the year. And then what happened is, um, exams became on online that year, <laughs> which is which was a miracle because I was like, because if it wasn't online, I I literally would have failed that year. But now the exams became online, and I was like, wow, this is literally a miracle from God. You know. And so yeah, open book exams, pass the year, <laughs> and then um, that was your sign, right? That was just that was your sign. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was like, you know what? Yeah, I was like, I think this is this is what my this is what what I meant to be. I meant to be a good Muslim, you know. I meant to be just a good person in general. And so I, I started going back to my religion, I guess. I started figuring out what Islam was, what the religion was all about. And the more I like looked into, the more I studied about it. I just realized, wait a minute, it's all about just becoming a good person, like. You're not meant to lie to people. You're not meant to swear. You're not meant to talk down on people. You're not meant to talk shit behind people's back. I mean, I was like, you know what? If I just focus on all these things, you know, my life will just get good by itself in a sense. Because if I just focus on being a good Muslim, I'll just become a good person. Everyone will be want to be around me. And so, yeah, I kind of just spend, I started spending more time with like the Muslim community in Dunedin, just started going more to, more to the events. And I just found like a community over there. And like, yeah, finally started praying. And I was just like, wait, wait a minute. This is who I am, you know? So I kind of just be like, yeah, finally got my identity, you know, it was kind of like, you know what, I'm not going to get into the peer pressure, just go partying or, or like, you know, do drugs or do alcohol. It was kind of like, wait, I have my set of beliefs. I have my values and I'm just going to stick to that. And I think from that, I found a lot of contentment because I feel like you can like, with the life, you can kind of get lost in like the loop of just trying to like the next thing, you know, it's like, okay, okay, um, what's the next thing? Okay. I got to get, you know, my girlfriend broke up with me. I got to go get, get another one or like, okay, I got to go find different mates or, you know, do these drugs to impress these people. But it ends up just like leading you nowhere and you don't actually end up getting true contentment. And then when I finally started becoming a better Muslim, I kind of like gave up all of that. And in a sense, it just made me so content. It finally, like I finally found true happiness in the sense that I wasn't chasing these things anymore. So I feel like, yeah, like, yeah. In a sense, I found out who I truly was after that, you know? Hmm. I love, I love I love that because you know you know like you said you know everyone thinks oh if I get into med school or dean school or, or law, whatever law school is but this is I'll I'll be who I am, but for both of you I love because for both of you it was your your identities were on a, at a crisis, you know who am I am I a med student am I a study what what am I and for Jose am I an athlete you know getting your your dopamine from winning all the time or am I studying, and both of your stories just come to the fact that hey you you both had to stop. And just reflect and go, hey, this is what we want to do. And for you, some of that was going back to going back to your faith. And you know, I, I love how the way you said, hey, being a, your faith is just being a good person. And you know, a lot of people, a lot of people use religion as a, you know, don't talk religion. But actually, religion is religion, whatever it is. But every religion at the end of the day says, just be a good, good human being. You know, whatever that looks like, be a good human being, and, and life changes. And I like what you said. If you if you're a good Muslim, you're a good person. Automatically, people come to you. It's just, it's just yeah, the, 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 the law of right, life, really, which is pretty crazy. The reason why I asked you both that, that question is because too many times people see, they'll see Samad or Samad is the, is the doctor and Uzair, or Uzair is the pharmacist. And they don't understand that actually we, that's just one part of our identities. And too many times in the world, we just focus on the one part of our identity. But both of you said, hey, this is only one fraction of our lives. There's a lot more to you. And, you know, for our listeners out there as well, I just want them to think about their own lives and go, hey, what is the identity that is truly me? And for both of you, your true identities are, are who you are as human beings, which you have come through adversities. That, that doesn't come overnight. You both said, hey, and it'll change again. You know, this life is a roller coaster. And as you both said, in the last, mm -hmm. what, five years, your life has gone all over the place. And if you can't come down to what, you know, for Uzzi, it's basically, hey, if I go against the wind and I find out what hard work is going to get it, you know, that's your grind. And somehow you found your identity as your faith and who you are, and that makes a big difference. Um, which is really beautiful. So thank you, thank you for sharing that. Um, we've been talking for a long time, and I, I'm just going to keep talking because we're going. What we'll do is we'll cut this into two. We'll do part one and part two. I want to yeah, ask a question yeah. that I want to ask something that 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 just came to me. Um, you both live in Christchurch. You're both Muslim, and this is going to be, I guess, a, a more a more difficult question. 
what is it like for you when for you both come from Christchurch being Muslim when the crisis was shooting happen for you because this is a community that is close to you and a city you live in uh yeah so I remember I remember um I remember hearing the news I remember there was a bit of um chit chat going up amongst um some of the students and they were like oh there's been a shooting were you, there. sorry were you in were you in crash or were you in in yeah, yeah, we were the crash. We were both in school yeah. when it was happening. Um, yeah, okay. Yeah, we were both in school when it was happening. I remember um there's a bit of chit chat going about there's been a shooting happening. I was like, oh okay, all right, I wonder what that's going. And then it was it, it started progressing into like, oh, there's been a, a shooting in a mosque. And I was like, wait, what? Like what's going on? And then all of a sudden, I think our entire class, uh, either our classroom was excused and let to go home or the bell had rung to to just like let us go. And it's like all of a sudden the realization started hitting me of what, what was kind of just happening. And I remember instantly I uh, got out of school and I started calling my dad, right? And I call my dad and he's like, pick up, pick up. And my dad picks up the phone and he's like, hey, what's happening? And I'm, and I'm just like, yeah, man, there's been a the mosque shooting. Did you hear that? And he's like, and he's like, yeah, I think he just started getting the news. He's like, oh, yeah, no, luckily I slept in that oh, wow. day. So so usually, like, Dad, I remember back then, Dad was going to the mosque, but, like, he'd always be that guy that's just the last person there. He's always be late, right? And so, like, as you know, like, the people in the mosque that got, um, that, that passed away at first were the ones at the very back, right? There was a first target. So Dad that day had just slept in and it just didn't even go at all, which is, like, a... A big, big relief that he did just sleep in that day um but yeah I, rem I remember um then i was on the bus and i was going home and that's when the video started refer uh, resurfacing that that the video um which you're not allowed to share or anything like that is um i remember watching that video at that time and it literally looked like a video game it literally looked like a first person first person shooting game and except the place where it was happening was literally the mosque and it was people that I recognized and it, it just didn't feel real how this guy was literally just doing that and yeah no it was it was absolutely it was absolutely ridiculously crazy and I remember after that event had happened me and my brother gave a speech at the unit at the, at the high school together we gave a speech addressing the situation and then we led a prayer um, we led a prayer as well after that. Um, yeah, so I do want to um, add to that. Yeah, no, definitely. I think when the, when the video, like, so, like, it was just being shared, like, you know, everywhere. And I just had my message. I was, I was watching. I was like, wait a minute. Is this like Call of Duty? But then, like, I was like, I looked at it more. I was like, wait, this is the mosque. And then the more I looked, I started, yeah, I started recognizing people. And my, my heart just sank. It, it just, it was just absolutely, like, it just kind of tore me apart inside, I guess. Um, yeah. And then, yeah, afterwards, just um, like the whole the whole thing. I don't know. I'm like, I, I'm. I find it quite hard to deal with like traumatic incidences. I guess I, I, I just don't know how to react. And in a sense, that I was kind of just like a lot more shut off after that. Um, and then at school as well, though. But um, it was actually like the amount of support that we got, like from people just messaging us and just making sure that it actually it really just like lit up my heart. I guess in the sense that like you know people truly did care, and you know the, it was just this one person, you know. And not a bunch of people hating on us or something like that. And I think that really just like kind of just like spoke volumes to like the fact that you know people do actually care and, and you know there's not that much hate out in the world. It's just only a minority of people. Yeah, and I feel like the, the support was something. It was, it was it was crazy. The amount of support that we had from the community was actually go. Cool. And I feel like it was amazing to see everyone kind of just come together and just like give their um just you know, give give their part and just like kind of just be really helping and just being really supportive and and like backing the Muslim community as well and you know and and, and saying you know that whatever that man did was was absolutely terrible and, and horrific and so it was very good to see the the community come together in that time of hardship and just like really just just help 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 with things and make make things better. Yeah, I mean, I can't I can't imagine what you what you as seeing. A place that you that you recognize and go to worship would be like. I just remember when when I heard about it, I still remember getting a text and someone just said, "Hey, there's a shooting crash." And I was in Taranaki at the time. I was like, "Yeah, whatever." I didn't think about it. Whatever, you know, this is what it's just a bit of a joke. Whatever, you know, you just don't think this is real. This is not New Zealand. Yeah. And then I turned on the news and I was like, "Oh!" And I just remember going, 
And I just like you said, Samara, I just had a sinking feeling. And I was like, oh, what, what happens? What's going to happen now? And this is really weird. I mean, I was like, oh, I, you leave Africa with this racism galore, or South Africa, and you go, right, cool, you come to a place where you think everything's all good and you see this. And it was really interesting because on the Monday, I had to go to school to give a talk, you know, like I normally do. And I couldn't give my talk. I just couldn't couldn't talk. I, I just felt so affected. I couldn't give a talk. And instead, my whole talk became about racism and hate and stuff like that. And the teacher looked at me and was like, oh, okay, this is a bit weird. And I was like, I had to just talk about this because it was something that was just so profound that there's this hate in the world. And as you said, it was one person, but you go, wait a minute, it, the impact of that one person is so massive. Um, but the beautiful thing, as you both said, was that, you know, the community just came together and New Zealand as a country came together at that time to go, hey, one person's hate doesn't equal everyone's hate. So it, it was it was a crazy time. The reason I asked you both because is it was your hometown. It is it is a place that was yours and the, the reactions that you have again is it's not a it's not anything that I can tell, but you you know you both you both come to the journey. So thank you for sharing that there. I'm gonna flip and come back to some some positiveness. So thank you for sharing that there. Um so now you're both at the stage in your lives where you know you're fourth year med school finishing up university pretty soon is there that's pretty exciting what do you both see if, if someone could say to you hey in the next year what is one thing that you'd like like like, like to have as a as a goal for you for next year not study we're going to talk about not study but things that are that, that are in your life that that you're looking forward to i'm with me personally i'm just i'm just i'm just i'm just going getting back um to christchurch i'm just trying to um get close with my family spending more time with my mom my dad my sister Obviously, my brother's a bit far away, so kind of hard. But yeah, spending more time with family, I, I didn't realize how much like family really meant. Um, I feel like when you're like a kid, you just think, you know, your friends are everything, you know? You kind of spend your time with them. But then like later on in life, you realize like, wait a minute, your friends actually are only around for a short period of your time. And they actually just disappear and you don't even know how long they're going to be there for you. And the only people that are truly there for you is is your family, I guess. And just, yeah, just trying to, and that's why I kind of cho chose to come back to crash it for my, um, my um ALM years for my my placement I was like you know what I want to like just get back get closer you know um so I'm just spending a lot more time just you know spending time with my family just talking to my mom talking to my dad talking to my sister you know hanging out with them trying to stay off social media you know not getting stuck in the loop just staying in my room you know such media. instead you know trying to go outside talk to them take them on like um little week trips and another thing I'm trying to focus on is just um again just religion just trying to get back um trying to get back into it just um yeah because I finally just truly found out you know like no point in just chasing all these things in life. It's all about just, you know, just being content with um what you have and just being grateful for what you have. And in a sense, like if you think that God gave you everything, just being grateful for what he gave you. And just trying to become an overall better person. Um yeah, so I've just been like, yeah, praying five times a day, like every single day for like the, the last um like like since the start of the year. And um, yes, yeah, just had such a profound like effect on my life in the sense that I'm just a lot more content and I'm just so much more grateful for the things I have. And um, yeah, so I think the main goal for me, again, just spend more time with my friends, my family, the people that are truly most like close to me, but then also trying to like, um, again, get back into religion and just spending more time with the Muslim community. Yeah, and I, and I love that because it's not, it's not really a goal. It's just you, like you said, being a good, good human, good human, you know, like you said, we all go through life. And I think as you get older, you realize that actually your family is really important when you're young. You're like, oh, they're just nagging me to this and nagging me to that. They are, oh, oh, why? But as you get older, you actually wait a minute. You know, your parents, your 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 siblings are really an integral part of your life. They 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 your DNA essentially, and you know they they you might not have the best time with them all the time, but when you do connect, things just change quite dramatically, and your conversations change as you get older. And you know, as you as you go back to your faith, you know, whatever the faith is, you know, for you, for you it's Muslim, for me it's Hinduism. For what it's at the end of the day, it doesn't matter what the faith is. It's just going, all right, cool. What's what's the bigger picture in life? What's what's the bigger picture in life? And it's not right or wrong. It's just it's just learning about stuff, which is really really beautiful. Was there what about you? Ah uh, yeah, so I feel like the, the the next thing that I'm looking forward to again, smart smart right? Like family's a family's a big part of it, and everything that I'm I'm trying to do at the moment is is for my family. And so the the thing for me at the moment is just getting out there in the big world. I feel like. It's, it's getting close now to become a proper adult and get into that, uh, get into the grind. Proper, proper, like proper adult. Proper, proper, proper adult and get, in, get yeah. into the grind. So I'm really, I'm really hoping that after I get this de degree, um, I hopefully start working straight away, get, get on that internship and just start chasing the bag. And then hopefully 
you know, go along with it. The plan that I've been thinking at the start, I have to constantly remind myself because I keep forgetting, you know, like why, why I initially wanted to be here. Right. Yeah. Um, so it's like, yes, like uh, getting the money from the pharmacy and, and starting, starting some side hustle, starting a business. And, you know, like parents, parents are, have been working really hard for like a really long time. And it's just, yeah, they're getting, they're getting a lot older. Like, obviously like they don't have the same steam that they once did. So it's really just like, it just, it just feels like an obligation to like get out there quickly, you know, do, do as much as I can, as quickly as I can. So then, you know, I can, I can like l let them retire as early as possible and just like, yeah, it's been like the, the rest of the years, you know, with them like really, really well. So, yeah. And that's really beautiful. And I think you've also both forgotten something that you both mentioned. I mean, you haven't forgotten it, but you forgot to mention it that is um so much you mentioned that when you when if when you're a doctor you help one person you help a lot of people and is there you mentioned that when you were when you were the drug delivery person the fact that you just spoke to people and you just brought some sunshine to their life you know you both have mentioned that as you've, you've brought light into people's lives and don't think you should forget that that you know um whatever you do next is it's really important to realize hey those are those defining moments that for you somebody was like hey helping one person helps a lot of people and was there for you was that talking to those lonely people that actually said hey pharmacy might be more than just dealing with drugs so it's really, really awesome um hey guys um we've been talking for almost two hours which is really beautiful I and mean, we could keep talking for another five hours i'm pretty sure um but we're going to start rounding up the podcast and the way we're going to run it off is um our podcast is called bastard of knowledge and we know that every single person has got amazing pieces of knowledge to share. You've shared tons in this podcast here, but I'm going to ask each of you, if you were, for our listeners out there, and for myself, I guess, as well, if you could share one piece of knowledge from your experiences so far, what would that be? And we'll start with, start with Uzira first, and we'll go to Samad. Yeah, no, absolutely, man. The thing is, like, it's life just kind of like this. Life life is, has going to have a lot of ups and downs. No matter what you're pursuing, there's always going to be a level of hardship associated with it and I feel like um it's very easy to get into things that like give you instant gratification but just know that the things that give you instant gratification are usually linked with something bad and the things that are really worth going for uh, are like guarded by a dragon you know it's like they say that the, 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 the dragon you know he guards the gold and the challenge is to overcome the dragon so then you get to the gold and, and it's really just like that. The things that you want most in life, the things that are worth going for, are always going to have something, like a bit of a challenge associated with them. And that is the hardship, the, the, the things that you learn along the way, the, how you prep yourself up so then you can, again, slay that dragon and get what you want. And I feel like you should always, you should always just put in the effort and put in the work, no matter, no matter anything your own personal thoughts or other people saying that you can't do it because eventually one day what's going to happen is you're going to eventually build up to the person that you are that will eventually get that get that reward and and the journey is the journey is all about becoming that person that will one day slay the dragon and get that gold so um and yeah and the journey is what what changes you in the first place because if you don't have it at the moment then you don't have the skills or the ability to have what you once want. But by the time you get there, you will already be a different person to, to then be able to obtain what you've always wanted. Um, and, and so changing you as a person as well. So um, never go for the instant gratification. That's always linked with something bad. Always go for the thing that that that, that is worth going for, and it will always be linked with hardship. Just know that. And it is exactly what you have to overcome for you to become the person that you will become in order to obtain that thing. So. I love that because, I mean, there's so many layers there, but the simple thing is, hey, instant gratification, easy come, easy go. Do the hard work. It takes a long time for that to go away, but you have to, like I said, you've got to slay the dragon. There's always going to be a dragon for the things that you really want. When there's no dragon, anyone can get it, right? Exactly. If there's no dragon, yeah. anyone can get it. If there's a dragon, then only those that have, like you said, as you've gone through the journey, you get the skills to slay the dragon. Beautiful. That's a beautiful learning and a beautiful piece of wisdom there to put in a basket. Samad, what about you? Yeah, I'm not as eloquent as Azir, but I'll try my best. But I think the um, main thing that I kind of kind of found out was is, it is it's about the journey, not the destination. And um, and you may have a plan in mind for yourself, but um, there actually is another plan in store for you. Like I like I thought I was gonna go do engineering, but you know, look look at me now. I'm here. And um, you may sometimes think that you know, in the darkest of times, you may think there's no, you know, this this, you know, that's it. Your life's it. You know. But just remember, there always is that light at the end of the tunnel. You just can't see it yet. And you just got to keep pushing through. 
and just not just don't fixate on the destination because the thing is like you can get to the top of the, of the mountain there's just so many different ways and everyone you know gets there at different times and different you know directions and just trying to um, stick true to yourself and not losing yourself and trying to get to where you want to be and thinking that you got to you know change yourself as a person or like make these compromises because um, at the end of the day you are like what your beliefs and values are and, the, and that shouldn't change regardless of where you're trying to get to. I, I love that because um, again, it's linked to what Uzair said, it's, 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 not, it's about the journey, right? It's about the journey and along the journey, it's so easy for you to lose yourself for instant gratification. But if you do the hard yard, you take that step, one step, whichever the step is. And, um, and along the way, if you instant gratification, you, you forget about your beliefs and your values, the hardship, but just the focusing on the, the, the journey, you're going to find out who you really are. I mean, that's really beautiful. So um, thank you both for sharing that. They're, they're both different, but they're both similar in that, hey, it's about the journey. The journey is going to have a dragon. Stay the dragon. You can learn about yourself. And you're going to get to your goal, whatever the goal is. But it's about the journey. Beautiful. Um, I could keep asking you tons and tons of questions, but I'm, but I'm going to stop right now. Um, it has been my absolute pleasure having you on today, and I'm sure our listeners here will have enjoyed everything you've said, and I'm sure there's so much more that you can share with us. Um, but yeah, thank you so much. Thank you for choosing to share with me, and thank you for um, thank you for being a part of my life. You know, you know, we we, we come into people's lives, and you came into my life for a certain reason at that, that, that point in time, and I always reflect about that moment, and I still remember the both of your smiles that day, and I both remember your emails that came through, I both remember, and I still remember when Charles was like, Charles said to me, I'll accept these, but you better make sure they're good people. And I was like, okay, Charles. <laughs> and I think you, you, you are good people. So thank you so much. Um, yeah, so before we run the, the podcast, anything that you'd like to add before we say goodbye? I'd just like to take this time to just thank you for just everything you do for all these high school students and uni students. Like like the impact you've had. Like we're probably like the most famous guy in Dunedin. <laughs> I and, don't like, know about that. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, it's actually amazing. Like it's truly like amazing like what you've done. And um just the fact that you're able to just spend all this time with like all these young people and just help them, you know, do the journeys. It's just, it's just amazing. Uh, it's my, it's yeah, my pleasure. It's my pleasure. I, I, I think my job is, is a gift. I really am privileged to get this job to talk to people and um, if people listen to me, which is great. So thank you. Yeah. Cause not yeah, many people can connect with um like so many different types of like people from all different walks of life, but you just have that special skill inside you, which I sometimes wish I had, but I'm sure you do. I'm sure you do. When you become a doctor, boom, bring it on. Everyone will bring it. Awesome. Sorry, Jose, I keep cutting you off. Yeah, no, definitely, man. Just just what's the mindset, man. Thank you so much for having us on this podcast. I feel like it's been amazing to like verbalize the experience because I feel like we we've, we've always think about, you know, like the things that's happening in our lives. We're always trying to piece them together, but really just having this opportunity to kind of like verbalize our thoughts and a remind of remind ourselves about our past and like where we've come from how much we've gone through has been like such an amazing experience because like I was kind of just going with this podcast I was kind of going through like some some problems like oh man I got to do this now you know uh, holidays are coming over I got to get ready for next semester and and just uh, just going over like the journey you know what I mean just piecing together um the trials that I've like you know we've had in the past and how we've overcome them it's just it's just made it so much easier now for me to just like think about like how things have been in the past what I did to overcome them to just have them reminded reminded me back again of all these things and again like we wouldn't be here if it wasn't for you you know being there that fortunate day and I genuinely feel like it's, it's been destiny you know I genuinely feel like it's destiny that you were there um, and and you know guiding us you know towards that particular direction whereas like before we were kind of headed in a different direction and it genuinely feels like something from God, you know what I mean? Like something like a, from a higher being that it's kind of just shaped the way that our life has kind of went. And yeah, it's, it's amazing. It's amazing. And yeah, thank you so much for everything that you do for us and like, all the other people. And yeah. No worries. No worries. Um, so, no worries. Somebody. I mean, that's really beautiful that you've shared that. I mean, like uh, I'm going to say this again, I, I'm a, it's my privilege. And when I, I watch it from afar and it's really awesome seeing what you both are doing. It's really quite funny. It's like when I see people achieving, it's like a proud family member and you're like, you just see what we're doing. You're like, you're really proud. You're in med school. You're getting into religion. You, you're smashing this out. And you just watch from afar and go, wow, this is really, really awesome. So, you know, just keep being awesome. It's just really beautiful. And like I said before, it's my privilege to do this. Yeah. But also, it is also the reason why Tani and myself started this podcast here, because as you said, too many times we don't reflect back on our story and where we've come from. You know, we just live in this world of go, 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 go. And we find that as we do this, the podcast for myself as well, 
I think about when you're, when you're speaking about going through the cancer treatment, think about, oh, that happened because me and my parents. When you speak about the hardship in Pakistan, say, oh, that was me in Zimbabwe. You know, so it's a great reflection tool for me as well. So thank you so much. Um, all right, we're going we're gonna to wrap it up. So listeners out there, hopefully you have found this podcast super, super um, interesting and full of, full of um, words of wisdom. I'd like to thank the Zara and Summer for jumping on today and sharing their words. And like I said, right at the start, episode number 80, super special because I have two special guests on here. So till next time, to our listeners out there, um, take care, be safe, kakite, and remember to put something in your piece of knowledge. Bye for now, everybody. Peace. Thank you for listening to Baskets of Knowledge. Yeah, we hope that you found something useful to put into your basket of knowledge. And as we said before, remember to put something little into your baskets of knowledge every week. And as always, feel free to like, comment, and share this podcast. Thanks, everybody. Bye.